Guns of the South is a standalone alternate history novel by Harry Turtledove. In it, a bunch of guys from the real-life South African neo-Nazi Afrikaner this or uh, that thing go back in time to the American Civil War to give advanced weaponry to Robert E. Lee's army in the Confederacy to help them win the war, more specifically AK-47s. Therefore, this book has perhaps one of the most badass covers of any alternate history book to ever exist. Due to a limit on how far back their time machine could go, they can only go up to 1864, meaning that Robert E. Lee had an advantage, but most of the Confederacy was worn out and close to collapsing by this point. Robert E. Lee is the main character, although Turtle Dove likes to use several characters in his books for multiple viewpoints, and I love that they choose him as the guy to get the weapons, because while Robert E. Lee fought for the Confederacy, he wasn't a big fan of slavery, despite owning slaves himself. In fact, there were several times in which he he said he would prefer to get rid of it altogether, and overall, he's not really much of a racist kind of guy like most of the South. He only fought for the Confederacy to defend his home state, which many people at the time had more loyalty to than the Union, as well as the fact that he didn't want to take up arms against his own family, who was also fighting for the Confederacy. So interestingly, a lot of the book focuses on Robert E. Lee's more moderate views clashing with the neo-Nazi extremist views. There's a great part where the neo-Nazis catch a slave helping soldiers ship some of the AK-47s to the men, and they lash out at him because they didn't want a black person handling the weapons. And Robert E. Lee told them to relax, you know, we ordered them to move the weapons, he's fine, you don't have to be that brutal. So you could see where there's a bit of conflict. Despite these clashes, though, Robert E. Lee can't do much because they also brought him some heart pills. Another interesting detail, because in our timeline, Robert E. Lee died shortly after the Civil War because his heart was in terrible condition, and the signs went back to the last few years of the Civil War. Here, he gets pills from the future and is much better in a way where he can't just stop them because they might take away his supply of pills. But overall, in terms of what the book covers, it's mainly 1864 up to a time period after the end of the Civil War, and to avoid spoilers, there are some interesting things you might not quite expect. This book also is more locally focused in the sense that you don't really learn about how the future is for the rest of the world or focus on the rest of the world's reaction to events in the book besides a few small things. But overall, fans of the American Civil War or more sci-fi oriented alternate history would enjoy this. There were a few small historical Easter eggs present in the book. One part involves the Confederate government trying to research these guns where they came from since they didn't know about the time travel aspect. And one guy says that they were made in the CCCP but couldn't find that on the map. And for those of you who don't know, CCCP is what USSR looks like in Russian. And in fact, there was another guy who proposed that maybe it was the Russian alphabet but they couldn't find a USSR thing either. So that was kind of a bit amusing to read. So overall, this book actually goes over quite a lot of politics, so in that area, I'll give it a 9 out of 10. Action is also high up there, especially with the AK-47s, another 9 out of 10. Culture, they don't go over as much, so 7 out of 10. In terms of map details, as in, do you understand what the world looks like at the end of the book? Do they go into enough detail on where you're at? I will give it a 9 out of 10, as they're pretty detailed. For event details, I'll give a 9 out of 10 because Turtle Dove is usually really specific when it comes to details on what's going on. For characters, I'll give an 8.5 out of 10 as there were some characters who were done really well like Robert E. Lee and then the others that were just okay, so it kind of balances out. In terms of interest, I definitely gave it a 9 out of 10 because it was a very interesting read from start to finish. In terms of a realistic start, like is the point of divergence a realistic one? And this is a tricky thing here because, like, time travel is sci-fi, and so you can't really cut off too much. But you can only go so far, so I'll only give it a 7 out of 10. In terms of realistic results, based on the point of divergence, does the end of the story seem realistic? Yes, quite realistic, actually. And I was going to give it a 10 out of 10, but there's a small detail at the end of the book, which I won't reveal because of spoilers, in which I will reduce it to a 9. And overall, just the story itself is just an 8 out of 10. Good story. And that gives us a total score of 84.5 out of 100. If you enjoyed this review, there will be another one next Monday. If you enjoy book reviews in general, a channel I highly recommend you subscribe to is Cloud Cuckoo Country. Cloud Cuckoo Country does book reviews with a lot of sophistication in it, and it is really entertaining, and I highly recommend you subscribe to it. Link in the description or the annotation.